Well, good morning, boys and girls. I know what you're thinking. You see my rock, and you're remembering a couple weeks ago when I had this very same rock. And some of you may have thought, well, we've already seen the Rock Kids capsule, but boys and girls, this is a little bit different story. In fact, I'm gonna tell you one of my favorite stories about a rock. In fact, rocks are very important in the Bible because, well, for one, Jesus is the rock. And, and Jesus told Peter that upon this rock, so there's another rock, I'm going to build my church. Now, I want to tell you, ask you a question. Um, if you had a choice to run and you could run on rocks like this in your bare feet or run on sand, which would you rather do? I bet you you would rather run on sand, wouldn't you? In fact, running on a rock like this that's uneven and there's sharp points, ah, sharp points on it, that could really hurt our feet, couldn't it? But, but it's, it's a lot easier to run on sand. In fact, if you go to the beach this summer, you may see people running on the beach to exercise. Now, what if, what if we remember our, our story before? Would you like to sleep on a rock like Jacob did? Or would you rather sleep on sand? I think sand would make a much better bed, a much softer bed than trying to sleep on a rock. In fact, some people, when they don't get uh, a good night's sleep or they sleep on, on a raw mattress, they'll say, that mattress was as hard as a rock. And when they say that, that means it was not a good mattress and they didn't sleep well. Well, Jesus told a story about two people that build a house. And you know what, boys and girls, while we may not want to run on rocks and we may not want to lay down and sleep on rocks, one thing we want to do is build our house on the rock. And Jesus told a story about two men. One of the men built his house on sand, sand. Now, in the Bible times, um, it, it, it wasn't so much, it didn't look like the sand that we see on our beaches. It was actually sand that was really patted down hard. In fact, if you were to stand on this type of sand that Jesus was talking about, you could stomp your feet and you wouldn't even get sand in the air. In other words, it looked solid. It looked just like a rock. And then he said the other man built his house on a real rock, a real hard rock. And when the winds and the waves came, you remember how that first house, it looked like it was solid? Well, the only way you know, they would know if it was built on a rock foundation was when the winds would come and the rains would come. And Jesus said, because he didn't build his life on Jesus, the rock, then his house fell. But the one who listens to Jesus when we listen to what Jesus says and we not only just listen but obey it, it's like we're building our lives on something that is so solid. So I want to encourage you as we have another Rock Kids capsule to build our lives on Jesus who is the rock. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are solid, that we can depend on you, that we can trust you. Lord, help all of us to hear what you are saying and to build our lives on your words. And we thank you, Lord, that when things happen in our lives that we don't like, that, that when the rains and the storms come and, and stuff comes into our life that we don't like, we will still stand because we built our trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye, kids. Look so, at the camera. Zoe. Hi. Zoe. This week's lesson is on gentleness, kindness, and goodness. There's lots of ways that we can show kindness, like writing a note, or helping a friend, or, or just, just playing, playing nicely. nicely, sharing, saying hi to a neighbor, or just smiling at a stranger. 
with more kind, it's like sharing the love of Jesus. It's kind of like a candle. When you hold another candle up to it, the light spreads. We get to be like that with our kindness. And that's how we share the love of Jesus. A love. Good job. Can you share some of your ideas with us? So this week we're continuing with our Fruit of the Spirit. We have two more weeks left. Um, and this week we're looking at kindness, gentleness, and goodness. So we've talked about the Fruit of the Spirit and how everything is rooted in love. When we are after God's heart and seeking His character and spending time with Him, um, really all the other fruit comes from the, the seed of love. So we have two more weeks left and today we'll be looking at a story from 1 Samuel um, chapter 25. And this story is about um, King David. So Saul was the first anointed king of Israel, the first anointed king of the Jewish people. And he ended up not being a very good king. And we remember hearing about King David being anointed and picked as the youngest brother to be next in line to the throne. At this point in the Bible, there's some um, clashing because Saul is still the king, but he knows that David is going to be the next king. And Saul is very jealous and very angry. And he doesn't like David at all and, and, and does lots of bad things and there's some fighting back and forth. So at this point, David is out with his men and they've had some confrontations with Saul and David and his men are hungry. Um, they've been protecting people in, in the countryside and kind of stepping into the role of, of king as taking care of his people. Um, and David and his men are hungry. So they go to a man named Nabal. His name means fool. <laughs> and so we're gonna guess that he's not gonna respond very, very nicely. But David sends his men to Nabal and asks um, during like a harvest, during a shearing time for the sheep, um, if they can have food. And Nabal says, who is this David and, and why does he think that I would feed him? Now he knows who David is and he knows um, that David and his men have helped protect Nabal and his sheep and his goats and his farm. And Nabal is unwilling to um, help David in any way. When David very well could have just taken what he needed, Nabal says, no, I'm, I'm not helping. Who is this David and who does he think he is? And David gets mad. He, he's offered his protection and he's been there um, serving. And David gets so mad, he wants to go like attack Nabal. Nabal's servants go to uh, his wife, Abigail, um, and it says that Abigail is very beautiful and very discerning and very wise and very kind. And Abigail hears that her husband has been unwilling to help David and his men. She acts quickly and she packs food for David's men. It says that she took 200 loaves and two skins of wine and five sheep that already have been cooked and grain and raisins and, and fig cookies. And she prepares all of this food and she takes it to David's men. And she pleads with David and says, I'm so sorry. And she's very humble and she's very kind. And she's, she says, I'm your servant. Um, let the guilt be on me. Please, please don't make this mistake. Like, don't sin in your anger and attack my husband um, who, who literally is a fool. Um, don't don't sin in your anger and take it out on him but have mercy and she asks for god's blessing on david she says and when the lord your god has brought my lord's success remember my servant and david is so touched by abigail and her kindness um, that he does he restrains himself and he accepts her gift and he accepts um, her plea for compassion and he does not go attack Nabal and his men. So if you want to read or check out the rest of the story about Abigail, um, ask your mom and dad and, and check out 1 Samuel 25. Um, it goes on to tell the story of David with Abigail and how he becomes king. Um, and, and she becomes really honored. It's a good reminder that God's people are gentle, kind, and good. Abigail offers words of peace and humility and kindness, um, even as David is angry. And it's a good reminder to us that um, in the face of, of anger or attacks or 
if someone's just not happy with you, um, that we can speak truth and kindness and really come to them um, with God's heart. God's people are called to be gentle, kind, and good, and no one embodies this more than the person of Christ. But all over the Bible, we can read stories about how God's people um, put their, their selfishness and their wants aside to be kind to people who aren't really kind to them. And so even in David's anger, um, Abigail is discerning and, and kind and offers these words and these gifts to, to King David and his men. So let's talk about it. Proverbs 15 verse 1 tells us a gentle answer deflects anger, but harsh words make tempers flare. How was this true in today's Bible story? So people get mad for lots of different reasons. Um, your brother might get mad if you take one of his toys or mess with a Lego setup that he's spent hours on. Or your sister might get mad if you play with her dolls or, or touch her stuffed animals. And it's okay to be, to be angry. But when we face someone who is angry, um, a lot of times our gut reaction is to also react in anger. So if someone says something not so kind to us, our first instinct is to respond in anger as well. And the fruit of the spirit here, the kindness and the gentleness is a good reminder that if we can just respond in kindness and we see today that um, David's anger is turned away and Abigail's gentleness is what changes David's heart. So maybe when we're struggling and maybe we're not having a good time with our families or our friends and maybe they're, they're angry at us, whether in, in right or wrong, um, that if we respond kindly and in humility, um, that we can really change the, the way that a situation plays out. So if, if we respond in kindness all the time, if we respond in this fruit of the Spirit and act like God and can kind of reflect God, um, then things tend to kind of work out a little bit smoother and maybe you won't have this huge blow up but you'll be able to talk more calmly. How can we learn from Abigail's words and actions? I think that really ties to the first question. Um, we see her respond really lovingly um, and ask for God's blessing on, on David and I think that if we remember that all of the people we're dealing with are also children of God. They are loved and esteemed, which means God thinks highly of them. But they are so loved by God, just like you are. So if we keep that first and foremost in our minds and and remind ourselves that this person is, is so loved by God and I have Jesus in me and can respond like Jesus with this person. So just like the kids shared with us earlier, um, I would ask that you kind of think outside your box and, and do something kind for, for someone today. Let's light the fire and, and pass along the flame. Or maybe our act of kindness influence someone else um, to do something kind. And, and really that's what Jesus did and that's how the world changes. And now for our memory verse, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Great job guys. This verse from Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 reminds us that even in the time of, of David and Abigail that Jesus was the same and had a heart for kindness and goodness and gentleness and all this fruit of the Spirit um, that he manifested in his people all the way back at the beginning of time with with these heroes of the Old Testament, that he embodied that in the person of Christ, that he was all the fruit of the Spirit through the rest of the Bible and today, that God hasn't changed and he wants all of, all of his character and all of his lovingness and all of his goodness demonstrated through you, demonstrated through his people and his body and that he is faithful to do it. So that wraps it up for this week, and next week we'll be looking at the last fruit of the Spirit, self-control, before we move into our new semester. Bye, guys. This week's lesson is on gentleness.